Any further waste of time, I just want to let you know that I do receive research grant support from Alcon Laboratories and has no financial interest, although you will see Restore and Alcon products being mentioned there from time to time. Customize IOL solution for your patient, and that is the key, and that's what we heard so far, and that's what we'll keep hearing. I'm not ashamed that we will have talked after talk, telling different dimensions of, of how you would address that issue. I think, I think, forget about it. This, this is not working because there is no sound here. But the question is, this, this is the made for you IOL situation. You can use this made for IOL or tailor make it for your patients. And that's because we realized that clear cornea day one is not good enough anymore. And I spent 15 years to learn how to produce clear cornea when I was evolving in all kinds of scenarios. So gone are the days when we used to counsel with the black cataract that your cornea will have a little bit hazy edema and your vision will be not very crisp like your other friend, wait for a week or two. We don't do that anymore. We, people expect you to produce clear cornea in respect of their eye. They're not bothered how bad their eye is. They want a clear cornea day one because that's what uh, they hear. And also the demand of the day is changing and we recognize, as we heard, emetrophy of a distance is not enough. It's the intermediate and near, which really produces spectacular induced handicap, spectacular handicap. So the focus, therefore, has changed from cataract surgery technical outcome to intraocular lens outcome, and that's why we are all here today for this 85 minutes. We understand that ideally intraocular lens should have a good intraocular behavior uh, on its own when you implant and also when it goes compatible with the eye, but also produce a refractive performance. And therefore, the basic characteristic when you select an IOL, and we are very happy that we have so many options available from the excellent companies and excellent outcome, but whatever suits you, whether it suits you slow control unfolding or reliable stability or compatible with your incision, select the one you like. But also keep in mind the stability in terms of his refractive performance and also the capsule behavior. And, and uh, DR just very correctly emphasized how important a little capsular opacification, which otherwise doesn't bother, can bother the multifocal lens. So all the clarity of the capsule and whatever you leave behind, you must consider before you select an IOL as a basic platform. But it is a refractive performance which demands refining of a precision as we heard in the preoperative workup, the intraoperative workup, and in your planning and making and formulating a strategy because not every patient thinks of glasses as a fashion accessory. Most of us hate these glasses. I don't like this appendages anyway. And as you say, always evaluate both eyes. And here I would just want to say that although you see this tall picture, you can Translate this to kind of your lenses you have. It is all synonymous here. All of these companies now have everything exactly like this, but you will keep saying it because this is the only one I have more of these. So customizing aspherity is important. We are sort of using this aspherical lens, IQ and techniques and whatever else as a routine, but we must be careful that if you, must, if you can measure and have an estimate of that particular eye, you must have it because 90% will be okay in the, these negatively correcting aspheric IOLs, but 10% will need uh, some other lens, either no, either aspherical IOLs or uh, IOL which produce aspherical IOL. The, this very small pupil, the eyes which are treated with hypermetropic LASIK, eyes which are not going to be centered. Any, a decentered IOL of the same kind, aspherical IOL decentering versus aspherical IOL decentering, aspherical IOL will have a more degrading impact on the visual quality. So if your pseudo exfoliation, zonules, etc., if you're not sure, do not put aspherical IOL, but otherwise go on. But what is important and what is the clincher, as we heard, is the total astigmatism. What is total astigmatism? Total astigmatism is the pre-existing astigmatism. That's not enough. Also combined with SIA surgical. So what is left behind at the end of three months to the patient is what is going to matter. So modulate your pre-existing astigmatism considering your SIA surgical industry. And, and that's what the total astigmatism is. And that's what is the clincher. But obviously you need to have a negligible that to really produce a good 
quality image. How much is this important? I mean, we are going, are we going crazy and create, uh, correcting 0.75 diopter of astigmatism? I never bothered even with 1.5 in good old days. The fact is that even as little as 0.5 diopter can matter. And we did a study where we had a normal patients, fake patients, not operated patients, our staff and others who had two groups of 0.5 or 0 0.75. 0.5 less and 0.5 and more up to one. And we corrected them with cylinders and measured them on all the contrast sensitivity performance and not corrected. And we found that the high spatial frequency, that means the resolution in a low contrast is affected adversely if you do not correct 0.5 diopter of astigmatism in a normal individual. It doesn't matter the routine, but if you test them, in a high resolution spatial. That means ability to demarcate the borders of your image, a face recognition, for example, in a low contrast would be affected if 0.5 also. And also the speed with which you read is affected if it's not corrected 0.5. So it doesn't matter, but the problem is, can we reproduce and are you sure that you can correct in a patient who are operated? No, we are not able to confidently say that we can correct 0.5 and 0.75 with that accuracy every time. Therefore, we are not addressing today in surgical correction, but the fact we should remember is that it does matter and one day we will be able to correct confidently even 0.5 and 0.75. And some of us probably are doing it, not me, sure. So if it is a negligible astigmatism, customizing IOL for that eye is not a big issue, as you can see. And you can have this toric IOL or multifocal toric or whatever else, depending upon the patient's uh, requirement. So up to 0.5, multifocal. Restore is synonymous with all the multifocal, which has a plus 3 add as restore, or 3.5 add, like acrylisa or technis. So it is the same group. And you can consider that multifocal or aspheric IOL. And if it is 0.5 to 1 diopter, you can have a multifocal toric or separate toric, or depending upon. Or you can combine the uh, laser touch or limbal relaxing incision and so on. But if it is 1 diopter more, more than 1 diopter, obviously uh, the, the consideration for toric IOL, as we heard, uh, is very good with or without multifocality. But I think, as, as Virat said, First of all, when you want to adapt the toric, and I saw that there are not many people who were using toric IOLs, and probably the same number will be with multifocal. First thing is to manage your mindset, and I had to struggle. I never adapted these lenses for, for quite a while, even when my good friends from international people were saying, you do that, Abai, but I was, my mindset was not ready. And I was trying to find out if it is expensive, and if it doesn't work, what will happen, and so on. Uh, you need to really gear up and... Uh, Key is to adapt precision everywhere, in your measurements, in your surgical performance, and so on. But having understood that, it is understanding the patient, along with understanding the eye, which will allow you to customize the IOL selection and make for you IOL is possible. There's no question about it. So how do I customize multifocality? And, and Dr. Ramamurthy said it very well. We have two groups of multifocal lenses now, fortunately for us. One is a group with a plus 3 and 3.5 add, the Toric, uh, the, the Acrisoft Restore, the Technis, the Acrylisa, and many others. All are very good. All of them have a 3 or 3.5 add, versus the new lens, which many of you may not aware, which is uh, only 2.5 add. So you have a choice now of treating multifocality. And these group of lenses, 3.5 and 3 add lenses, are configured mainly for distance and near. And therefore, they give a flexibility of versatile vision at all distances. But they may have a precision issue in some contrast. And the similar thing is done now with pseudo accommodating uh, trifocal IOLs that they address. The, all the other existing multifocal lenses, including Restore Plus 3 and others, do the same thing like the trifocal lens that they have a varying proportion of distance, intermediate, and, and reading vision. Uh, some lenses will focus more on the reading, some will more on the intermediate, and some for the distance. So we have a flexibility and you have a choice, but it, we are trading off with precision. Precision is something you have to give away a little bit of it if you want a flexibility in, in your range of movements. Uh, range of vision without 
or less dependence on glasses. So for restore plus three, you don't need to worry about it. Sure, of the personality who do not really understand or who care uh, what they are getting. But this lens has changed the understanding of multifocality and my practice uh, in multifocal was around 5% until this lens came and now it has gone to double figures. And that's because this lens is designed mainly for distance and intermediate. This is the only lens where the central lens is 100% uh, distance dominated, the central disc you see, and has a light energy going for distance and intermediate. Uh, so therefore, most of us who, whose activity 80% of the time you spend in 24 hours is distance and intermediate would consider this lens. However, the negative are two. One is that they have to have, they have to have no, no other alternative to have reading glasses. So they usually have about 1.25, 1.5 or like that range reading glasses for small prints and reading at a close. And also they will need extra light because the light energy is going more for distance and intermediate and that applies to all the multifocal including trifocal but more so for these 2.5 diopter uh, IOL. <clears throat> but the advantage is that they will get a very excellent intermediate vision. That means they will be able to watch television and see the mobile at the same time with 2.5 and do the kitchen work and laptop very well and, and have a very enjoyable uh, most commonly used distance vision with this 2.5. Uh, so we'll, I'll take some examples uh, to, to prove the points uh, of different how you customize. And this is a businessman with a very active lifestyle, but, but fairly, fairly adapting or a decent person. Uh, he was uh, using uh, his car once in a while for driving also in the evening, and he had many reading glasses. So we had uh, to discuss with him his requirements were very average. Although he was a high officer, he didn't have to do a tremendous work of reading and he was a kind of amicable, amiable personality and had to drive. So we, we did this laboratory profile as we saw and it, it, everything was okay. And we, therefore we advised uh, after discussion of trade-offs that you will have some glares and hellos when you drive, uh, which usually get adapted uh, and be prepared for it. And uh, you will have this range, but if you really test yourself, you may have a little bit of a compromise. And he said, I'm, okay, I'm not a very fastidious guy. And uh, he had, uh, fortunately, well center restore. And uh, he was very happy that he didn't have a, uh, many reading glasses and he had a better lifestyle. So what was the message? People can adapt if you talk to them. So counseling, taking time, and, and do not overemphasize. Reveal the truth. It's not your fault that they can have halos and glare. It's not your fault that the low contrast sensitivity performance could be a little reduced. Tell the science, this is the science you have, but you are advantage. So if you want, no glasses. I press one mind if I do not have glasses, these hypermetropic ones I'm wearing, if I, if I can have a reasonable quality. So most of us mind. So foresight discussion plays an important role and restore plus three and therefore all other lenses which fall into this group can be an option for those who do not have a very fastidious visual requirements. But also for those who do not know what to look for. You can go ahead, don't worry about it. They will be happy because uh, of uh, the expectation. This is the second case, a medical personnel uh, radiologist. Very good surgery done by my colleague uh, uh, across the nation. But unfortunately, he had a minus 1, 2.5. And he wanted a good distance vision correction. He came to us and we discussed 2.5 because he, that is a distance. He wanted on a distance and restore 2.5 can give a good quality, almost like an IQ lens, almost like a monofocal aspherical lens because that's a centrally dominated distance lens. And we discussed that uh, of complementing strategy where we are complementing one monofocal with the 2.5 and uh, we, we put 2.5 and he was very happy because his, his unaided vision bilaterally because of the left eye was unaided 6.6 six, and he could read well uh, without glasses also because of the residual uh, myopia, but also with these additional stuff. So he was very happy. So what did we do in this case? We customized this strategy for his personal and professional requirement, for intermediate vision for reading at the x-rays and uh, reading in his cabin, and also distance unaided, we complemented both. So the message is that 2.5 restore can be paired with a monofocal IOL, as in this case, or even fake IOL.
or even plus three kind of lenses, three or 3.5, and if you can match both flexibility and precision, and then you, you can do that. But other eye, you must see that. So 2.5 can be done even for those who look for precision because it really gives a good quality distance and intermediate vision, provided they have good lighting conditions. Now, this is a unilateral cataract of a very executive banker. Uh, he works all the time, but he also had a hobby of motorbiking. That compl complicated my strategy, because on one hand, we don't want him to have a halos and glare, and he loves that uh, motorbiking in the weekends. And also, he has a precision-oriented intermediate vision. So that's what we had, and we, we give 2.5, and we discussed trade-off, and he was very happy because he had a good intermediate vision and minimal halos. The best part of this 2.5 is that they very, 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 very few patients will have halos of any significance to bother them. So you can consider with unilateral implantation even those people who are requirements and are also fastidious and that you can go ahead, you won't go wrong. A final case of a uh, deputy general of police, retired, wanted to play golf, but had a significant astigmatism. So we had to wait at that time to, to get this lens. We didn't have this lens available at that time. We waited for six months, and we put this multifocal toric lens, and he rings me a few months ago that he won the uh, golf tournament, and he was very happy. So you can customize for eye and the mindset. So I think uh, we gave a lot of uh, different dimension how you can customize, but Merlin Pandey, on my request, has agreed to, give, to talk to us on custom lens and the science of it, the way he does it. And he has a little trick, he told me. Uh, so let's hear him, and uh, then we can have questions uh, if we have any or comments.